Hey, right, what's up, everybody? It's DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. If you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats. Fanatic is spelled P H A N A T I C. Uh, today's video basically is setting the time signature uh, within a given pattern. It's actually separate from the time signature of the project or the beat that you're working on. Um, I rarely use this feature, uh, but it does exist and you can get creative results with it, especially if you're kind of having like a brain freeze where or creative block where like you want to change a certain melody or sound and just have it lock in on a different grid or a different time signature and unorthodox. You can just really experiment with it. Um, and it can be used on different types of sounds. It doesn't matter if it's keys, pads, uh, synths, leads, bass, uh, or drums. Um, you know, hi-hats, open hi-hats, kicks, whatever. Um, because the, it's all data and the time signature is unique to each pattern. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, this is pattern one, for instance, just has a simple little melody. And what I'm going to do, um, it's standard. FL Studio has um, time signature standard as 4-4 four, four time. And I'll show you in a second here. Uh, what you do to set the time signature independent for each pattern, uh, you right click. Uh, if this is not showing, this is your patterns. You just click on that. This is your pattern picker. If it's you know showing audio or automation data, just click on that. And you right click on the pattern that you want to change the time signature and you go to set time signature. Left click on that, then it opens the piano roll and all your MIDI data of that pattern. Time signature change. Now this is where you set up your time signature change. The numerator basically is how many beats in a measure. Uh, obviously this is 4-4 which is also known as common time. Uh, the de denominator is what note gets what beat, basically gets one beat. So the quarter note in this instance gets one beat. So uh, that's good to know because if you're not really familiar with time signatures, you know, you can always just refer back to that. This is how many beats are in a measure and this is what note gets one beat. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, usually common time is just standard, you know, you can kind of you can actually finagle your way, work your way around the time signature by doing certain things, but I'm not going to get too too far into that. So I'm just going to randomly change it. Usually, if you do two, it's just going to do it like cut time. So let me try three and see if that changes anything. It looks like it did shift my chords a little bit. So let's see what that hear what that sounds like. didn't really change that much um, it's actually it did if you notice yeah, let me change that uh, if you notice here this little tab they also show that to let you know the time signature is different on this pattern compared to any other pattern uh, let me just open up pattern 2 notice there's no tab here in pattern 2 because I didn't even change the time signature so uh, that's really good to know this little guy right here and you can always uh, cl right click on the tab and change it back um, it's a feature I rarely use but you can actually experiment with it like I'm doing right now notice, <laughs> notice how that one note just moved let me ch change that here so time signature, let's just do something really crazy. 14, or I don't even know what that is. So it's not making much of a difference here. Probably. Yeah, it's not really making much of a difference because of my grid that I have set here. Because it doesn't matter what, you know, changing the denominator uh, definitely should change something. So let's try that. Let me see what this sounds like because I put several notes in. Let's 
So let's uh, right click on that. It's a quick way to get into it. Set time signature. And let's just change that to one. And <laughs> change this to, I don't know, eight. Notice how the grid shifts. Look at the the um, ruler up here, the, the measures. Now this initially was a four bar uh, pattern. Now look how many bars it is now. It's, it's up to like 33. So, and notice the project is four bars. So this pattern's independent of the actual project um, time signature. Now this is how you can do some really creative stuff. Um, you can have this one pattern just like super long. Um, let me see some. Let's try it with song. So basically, it looks like, I rarely use this feature, um, it looks like you can put, it seems longer within the pattern, but in the project is definitely for bars. I don't really see the purpose of using this, to be honest, <laughs> but it can be done. And this is actually probably more for like a musical level where you can get really deep and try different things in here. Actually, I, mean, I just put random notes there. Actually, I see a reason why you can do it. Um, let's say you want to have more intricate notes within that time frame. So let's right click, change the time signature back, 4-4. Four, four. No, all the notes are still there. Set time signatures randomly. Notice they're all even, even numbers. So how many beats in a measure? So now if it's even, let's try this. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So it can get confusing because I'm starting to get confused, but basically there's the top note, I mean top, uh, the numerator is how many beats in a measure. And the bottom is what note gets one beat. So in this instance, we have Every 16th note gets one beat. Let's try to hit it with the metronome here in the pattern. Let's see what happens. See, so it's just a different way of counting time. Um, being that the project is pretty much telling you this is 4-4, four, four. this would be four bars or whatever. Uh, within the pattern, you can have just a different time signature, which is cool because you can kind of, let's say you're creating something really fast or you know you like a really fast um, metronome and you want to do like some, some really quick hi-hats or whatever, uh, you can have this really fast uh, metronome. So basically, the, again, you right click, set time signature, and you have um, every, um, for the numerator, there's three beats in a, in a um, bar, or measure, excuse me, bar, measure, whatever. Uh, measure is more of the traditional um, term. And denominator is what note gets one beat. So every 16th note, that fast uh, clicking you hear in the metronome is one beat. So, and there's three of those in each bar. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's why you have so many bars, which is, I believe, 
uh, what was it 21 so anyway you get the idea so it's definitely a different way of creating music to feature I rarely use but I thought I would share because it's there and not a lot of people know about it um, because I don't know it, it's not really well known and I thought I would share it but it's also something you can experiment with when your productions because it kind of it can give you a whole different feel or interpretation of, of you know having patterns and different time signatures compared to each other and it could also you know just give you a different perspective of creating so you know feel free to explore just like any doll you know I've said it before it's like the doll is your your you know your tapestry and, and it it's there to interpret you know what's in your mind what's in your spirit and it's not meant to control you you control it so feel free to explore time signatures and different melodies and not only with just instruments you know uh, I mean sounds you can experiment with drums too you can kind of just create patterns and see what happens uh, actually let's just create a pattern before I end the video pattern five and we'll make it you know let's make it a two bar and what I'm gonna do is just mess around with some hi-hats and see what happens pattern five let's just do that we actually have a fast uh, tempo and also a quick way of um, instead of just drawing them out like this you can always just do this right click on the sound you can fill each two steps which is cool we'll leave it like that and let's mess around with the time signature here um, again uh, maybe you can change it from here nope so to change the time signature for pattern 5 you always go to the pattern picker from the playlist window anyway right click go to set time signature and let's just experiment here uh, we'll leave that as 4 and let's try let's get an odd number 11 see what happens let's right click set time signature let's try 15 beats and what note gets one beat let's do eight and see how the the measure is stretched out and before it was a two bar so it's just a different measure of time notice how you know the notes didn't change but the actual bar changed so it's just a different measure um, of time and you know you can play around with it and see what you like but it's definitely something I rarely use but I thought I'll just share it because it's something that exists for a reason maybe I haven't discovered it yet maybe you will be able to discover something but anyway Again, it's been DJ Fanatic. You can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats. Content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Again, you know, feel free to explore this. You know, it's not really like up there as far as like super, you know, exotic <laughs> upgrade or whatever. But it's just something you can experiment as far as um, having different. Um, uh, timing so that way you can kind of interpret your melody different or drum patterns differently or whatever because uh, you know like in trap music you know people like to produce in a higher tempo so that way they can make more intricate um, you know notes or hi-hat um, rolls and whatnot so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video uh, it's DJ Fanatic signing out all right peace